Good afternoon, good Orthodox and fellow travelers that may not be Orthodox. We're going to dis continue our discussion. Uh, the last time we talked about uh, uh, a fellow that's going to be executed uh, for crimes he committed in his youth. And what do we think about the death penalty? But before we get to that, there's something I think we, that we need to address. And I'm wondering what you think about this. In the United States today, and in, in, in some of the more liberal type cities, There is enormous amount of crime and repeat offenders. And that the, the system is that they go in, it's a swinging door system. And they go in, plead not guilty, and out the next day. And we, we, we've had several instances of a, a guy that ran over his wife, killed somebody, I don't know who, who it was, went in, went in, was charged, got out the next day, and he ran into the Christmas parade in a city, killing I don't know how many numbers of people. So what do you think about today's liberal criminal system where there's no retribution and that there's, const there's constantly repeat offenders because how liberal, it's like, it's like they're saying, okay, the, the victim is treated awful by the system and the, and the criminal is like celebrated. What do you think? Well, actually, I have problems with both the liberal and conservative approaches. And once again, this is me being an economist. That, um, number one with the liberal, um, rehabilitation, uh, somebody does drugs, send them to drug rehab instead of prison, things along those lines. But it's a, it's a strange story, but it, it's a true story. Um, I have a cousin, um, and she's had some issues in her life. And she's in prison for a while. And she gets out of prison and misses her girlfriend, who she was in prison with. So she goes out and purposely commits a minor crime, breaking her parole, so she can go back to prison and be back with her girlfriend. And I exchanged some letters with her. Um, she's my first cousin once removed. Um, about how prison for her, it was almost set up like a dormitory system. Um, there were no locks on the doors. They had free reign and everything. So for her, she was better off in prison than she was out on the street. Her life was so much better um, because people in prison have trouble finding job after they get out of prison have trouble finding employment, income, things like that. So she actually made a choice that she'd rather be in prison than in, um, out on the street. So if, you know, if people do make that choice, and that, well, I'll go to prison, but prison isn't that bad. You grow up poor, um, and we keep on that liberal idea that 
keeps being brought up about, oh, because of this, because of this, because of this, that people cannot escape poverty, that they have no other choices but to commit crimes and things like this. So it's almost like it's not their fault that they go to prison. Exactly. Which is just, um, graduate high school, get a job, any job, don't have any children outside marriage. You'll have a successful life. Every statistic shows you do those three things. Graduate high school, um, don't have children outside wedlock, get a job, you'll have a good life. But that's not what people, that's not the message of the left. The left has this message of um, that because of injustices, institutional problems, things along this line, that um, these people commit crimes, they're driven to this. So when they go to prison, um, nobody's saying a prison is a country club, some prisons, okay? There's a lot of violence in prison, things like that. But when you have the idea that you're not afraid to go to prison, it's going to make you more likely to commit crimes that you consider economists all demand curves slope downwards and there's a demand curves for crime. So if you make the penalty for crime less, you'll get more crime. And if you have this attitude, well, prison isn't that bad compared to my life on the street, and you see no way out because you're constantly told that you have no way to escape this system, that uh, the odds are stacked against you, is it any surprise we have such high crime rates in this country? The conservative approach of throw them in jail, throw away the key, three strikes, you're out. Um, we need stronger um, punishment. Well, once again, economics comes in and says, no, that's not where you put the money. You don't put it in building more jails. You put the money in. Um, somebody's going to sit down and say, okay, if I commit this crime, what will I get out of the crime? Compare that against my chances of being caught committing this crime. And as somebody, uh, and I, I witnessed this on almost like a weekly basis, there is a Walgreens up the street from me where I get my prescription drugs and I go in and buy other things. I swear half the time I'm in there, I see a crime being committed. Somebody's stealing something. Somebody's just taking things off the shelf and leaving. Well, why doesn't the store do anything about it? I have no answer to that question. Why doesn't the store do anything about it? The key is the store doesn't do anything about it. The clerks have been told you cannot stop these people. You cannot detain these people when they steal something. You can tell them, you know, you're, I was actually in there one night where a guy came in, well-dressed, didn't look like needy or anything grabs a bouquet of flowers. I was even joking with him about, well, how big a bouquet? Well, how bad were you? And stuff like that. So I'm at the counter checking out. He just takes the bouquet of flowers and starts walking out the door. And the clerk says, you know you're on camera. And he says, I don't care. Because he know, knew that absolutely no consequence to them. I've seen this happen at the grocery store too, where they're not allowed to do anything. So if somebody thinks if I commit a crime, I'm not worried about the punishment. I just think about, well, what's the odds of me ever seeing a day in court? And at that Walgreens, there are no chances of being caught. Um, we, my, many years ago, our house was broken into. Um, stole credit cards and 
Eventually, the police showed up like a day later, took our statements. We actually had videotape of this guy at a convenience store using the credit, our credit card to pay for gasoline. What did the police do? They didn't follow up on it. And I don't blame them. There's so many crimes, they don't have the time, they don't have the resources. So the conservative approach, approach given more time in jail, doesn't work because they don't care about the time in jail, they care about the odds of being caught. So where you have to put your money is in police and make sure that when crimes are committed, somebody's held accountable. Right now, nobody's held accountable, and if they're held accountable, Prisons are so overcrowded, um, they don't want riots in prison, so they make it as tolerable as possible. The inmates run the prisons. It's a total disaster any way you look at it. So crime rates in this country, not surprising. Well, I think that um, we, have, we have a friend uh, very well I mean, wealthy, wealthy family, and one of their boys, very good-looking kid, married and had a family, but he was always pilfering. And I guess he got caught, and he was in jail, and I don't know what led up to it, but he ultimately hung himself. And uh, I think our, our justice system needs to be overhauled. We need more police. And when someone commits a crime, we have to prioritize the type of crime. But when the crime, when the crime is one of, of uh, a bodily harm to someone, and you you go in and out like a revolving <coughs> revolving system, it's bad. Those people are going to continue. They're going to continue doing stuff that's going to lead to the loss of life. And I think that the prosecutors in, in San Francisco and California, when you hear, hear them speak, and in Chicago, the mayor of Chicago, and, uh, and in New York, there's something radically wrong. Radically wrong. And they feel that the person's biographical sketch was such that he couldn't help him but commit a crime. Yes, he could. Yes, he could have helped himself. Everything is in the will. We have free will. I've known people that were abused and, and raised in the most horrible circumstances, didn't go out and commit crime. They were determined to better their lives. And our business people today, not everybody that has an awful upbringing has to be a criminal when they get older. It's like we've lost our conscience. America has lost its conscience. And these, young, these people that, that keep committing, recommitting. My God, I was watching on the news and they were showing these people going into the stores and walking out with all these expensive items. Why would we let them get away with it? Why were there not police there? And these people are never, are never going to lead a regular citizen's life because they started out with being able to get away with 
Like you said, the young man said, I don't care. And he was told there was a camera, camera on him. But there is something very drastically wrong. And these, this justice system is, I think, is what is leading what would be a minor criminal to becoming a major criminal. The way they are dealt with. They think they can get away with anything until they cross that line. They cross the line and they take a human life. God help our country. The families are so broken down. And my question is, at the core of all this, where are the fathers? These are homes where there is no father figure. And if there is a father figure, he's not a vigilant father. And the studies are showing more and more and more that criminals have been nurtured in the life of criminality from their very young age of having no accountability, no discipline, and no father in that home for there to be the, a structure of the, fa of, of the family. It's a tragedy. And I just wanted to share my two cents about this. Soon we'll be celebrating Father's Day. We need fathers to be fathers. Our society won't gain its moral equilibrium until our, our homes are complete with mom and dad who love and nourish their children. All those riots that were in Portland and uh, uh, Wisconsin all over last year, these are, they, they would be called in, 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 in Russia, they'd be called wreckers records. I'm convinced all those people were raised in, were not raised, and therefore nothing had any value, so let's just tear it down. We need to have a moral equilibrium again in our country. Fathers in America wake up. We need you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the absentee fathers. No good. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button uh, on, on, your, on your iPad, your iPhone or whatever. Put also the subscribe button. Please subscribe and push the notification so you'll know when, uh, when we do these videos, when they come out. Thumbs up, subscribe, notification. Remember those three things, and I'd be very grateful. God bless you.